Hold on, hold on. Keep, I'm, I'm playing it off. Play it off. Yo, hold on. I ain't know we got to get ready to film. Hold on, hold on. They online. I ain't know they's on the line. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I, mean, I ain't know stat. On the line. Yeah. Hold that down for me, though, because I, I want in after this. So, right. baby, I got to get ready to film. I ain't know they's on the line. Right. Hop it down for me. Yeah, hop it down real quick, real quick. No fun in Yeah, as soon as it's done, like, pardon me, I ain't know I gotta film everybody on the line. You running late? Just take your ones with you. Put that off the table. Yeah, you right. A lot more where that came from. You don't, you don't have to get you out the way. Take, um, take your shoes over there, please. I gotta film the show. Uh, don't worry about it. We'll get you right. Just I gotta film the show. Thank you very much. I, I'm running late. We got you. We got you. Step out, please. Thank you, baby. Just wait for me out there. We gonna get all your money and everything you got. For the union. Hello, y'all. Uh. I was selling crack on a private jet up in the hell and back. But no confusion, this a reunion. Hello, y'all. Welcome back. Get murder here. He counting money. He said, can't man the hell with rap. I'm only here to shit on niggas and piss on bitches. Welcome, ass. I bought jewelry and bikes, nigga. Black Benzes and white figures. Now I'm out here and I'm looking for more chandeliers and light fixtures. Now. Nah. I don't like niggas, what's wrong with me? I'm a hype nigga, but this 44 turn to Michael Jordan. I look and say, take flight, nigga. That's what happened when I'm left in the studio. Dolo, PT, Larry in here, everybody here. <laughs> hey, yo, um, yo, welcome back to, yeah, man, um, what's going on, everybody? It's your host, Cameron, and welcome back to It Is What It Is. Today's show is sponsored by Underdog Fantasy. It's an easy way to make some money by betting on some of your favorite players. The app's available in more than 30 states, you know, New York, California, Texas, just to name a few. Make sure you support the show by hitting the link in the bio and downloading the Underdog Fantasy app. Today, I'm motherfucking hosting. I'm hosting. Your boy, Killer Cam, and I'm joined by Murder Fucking Mace. I call him Beth and Stat Baby. Yo, what up? What's good, Killer. man? What's good, nigga? <laughs> they just left me here dolo. You know how I do when, they, when I'm dolo, man. You know how I go, nigga. My bad, I'm running a little what late. What you was doing? Like a party, right. nigga. Like, nigga, you know, P.T. Larry, here, he's having a party, nigga. Shit. <laughs> baby girl, baby, I got baby loving, you know, got a few baby loves, yeah. though. Baby loving the motherfucking, that lounge, man. I don't disrespect y'all and all that when I'm here, you know, when y'all here, but when I'm by myself, I do my thing, you know what I mean? So today, <laughs> I'm going to be hosting the show. And all gonna, right. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to start off, man, because y'all helped me down when I wasn't here. Now y'all off doing y'all thing, so I'm going to hold the show down today. So we're going to start off, first of all, with the motherfucking Knicks. The New York Knicks lost to the Indiana Pacers by probably 2 billion points. I don't have the exact score in front of me right now. I'll get it in a minute because I was doing a few other things and I ain't know Mason stat was on the line, so let me get my computer. But how do y'all feel about the New York Knicks losing two in a row and the Indiana Pacers Tie in the series going back to New York. We'll start with Mace. I told you, killer. We can't get our hopes up high, yo. This is this is classic New York, man. I know they're gonna be mad at me, but this is what I'm talking about. You see, I got my Indiana yellow on. I knew this was gonna happen. Where's Mark Jackson when we need him? <laughs> exactly. That's who we really need to talk about. Right. Man, it, I'm saying, you know, Jalen Brunson only had like 19 points, so that's not going to get it done. Especially when them, they, they was leading the, the lead that they had. This is crazy, man. I, I, I hope they turn this around because realistically, I don't want to see them out of the playoffs right now. You know what I'm saying? Even though it will, it will be classic New York. It's just, they got to turn this around. We got to call Mark Jackson tomorrow. What do you think, Stat? I just feel like with every team playing right now, you can never get too comfortable. You know, people get a couple wins and they're like, you know what, we got it. That's just not how it works. And the Pacers were clearly the better team on the court today. Like it was 121 to 89. That's a blowout. That's unacceptable from the Knicks. Um, Pacers maintained control most of the game and they had their other players step up scoring in double digits. 
that's what, you know, the Knicks got to do. You can't just give up. Not saying that they gave up because we know this is an important game, but we don't have time for that right now. TJ um, stepped up, Pascal Siaka, Miles Turner, Obi Toppin. Like, they all scored in double digits. That's important to help the Pacers. And if the Knicks aren't going to find a solution, it's going to be real hard. So, hopefully yeah, it's, it up. I mean, it's supposed to be – it's supposed to be pause hard anytime you got a team that is that got five players in double digits. That lets you know that they're like flowing pause on all cylinders. So you got Toppin at 14. You got Miles Turner at 13. Who else? Um you had Siakam at 14. You got your boy Halliburton at, at 20, and he was looking like he was amped up. And I know this was a, a low production game for Brunson, but I mean, whenever he's 0 for 5, they're going to lose because they need three pointers. They don't have a big team. You know, they got to have um, they got to have more production. And right. I know that Brad, I also thought when Brad gets in the double figures that they would win, but he was 3 for 11. So that wasn't going to really help. And I, 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 this is, I don't, I'm not ready to get scared for the Knicks, but they got to win this next game. They cannot go into this next, you know, next season, not even season, but series of play with them down 3-2. That would be, that would be catastrophic for New York because the history says that when they get to these places, deliver. What do you think about that, Stat? Well, I was just going to say, to your point regarding Halliburton, I think he has a lot to prove. Obviously, you know, most of the teams do, but I think that he's been overlooked mm -hmm. a lot, even down to the in-season tournament. And I understand that they're a small market team, but he has been putting forth the work. He has been a team leader, making sure that his team is doing what they need to do. So in this situation, it's like Nick's fan base is getting hype, and it's like I'm happy for y'all, but specifically Halliburton is like, you know, we coming back stronger. This isn't going to be an easy route, which is what I think some people thought still to this point. And it's not. So. Okay. Are you ready to get scared, though, is the question. Are you ready to get scared for the Knicks? And that, scared? That, that's leading into my next question, guys. Where do okay. you think this series is going in the next few <laughs> games? Because now it's not a four out of seven. It's a two out of three. So what do you think is going to happen? Are the Pacers going to steal the series? Or are the Knicks going to hold on and win the series? We'll start with you, Mace. Um, I'm not sure right now. You know, I, you know when it gets to 2-2, two, two, it's really whoever wins the next game. That's, I mean, that's what history says. And I think whoever wins it is going to be a 4-2 series. I do know that. Whoever win the next game is going to win it. And they're going to win back-to-back -back games. So where are they playing at next? In, in the Garden? Tuesday night in Madison Square Garden. Yep. They better win that game, man. So the reason, I'm, the reason, I, let in, the reason I let into that question before we get to stat is because, Mace, you were just asking, is it time to get, is it time to get scared? And I don't think that was a question for stat. I think that's a question for New York Knicks fans. And I'm going to ask yeah. you the question. Should New York Knicks fans be scared right now? Whatever these niggas had planned, that they got up two zip, now they're down two games. You can't be thinking we on a run. So what, what do you think? Niggas is sitting there like, yo, we got to get this win. But for the people that know the New York Knicks fans and people that know the Knicks, got to be petrified because this is – what we talked about all year, that you get us all hyped up and then something happens. I don't care what the excuse is now. It's always something. It's, it was Bernard King, then it was this person, then it was that person. And it's always been a reason that they, they got an excuse. But I, I don't know what to tell them at this point. Yeah, well, the Charles Smith. I'm nervous. Well, the Charles I'm nervous for them. I'm nervous for them. Right. Brother Charles Smith misses the dunk. Patrick Ewing finger rolls it. I understand where you're coming from, Mace. So let me ask you, Stat, before we get ready to move on. What do you think? Who do you think is going to win this series? Honestly, I'm kind of leaning toward, and it's like, I don't even want to say this because I know how people get. 
I'm kind of leaning towards the Pacers. Like they've proven game after game that they have what it takes because at the end of the day, the job is not finished yet. And I know that the game is an MSG, which is super important for the Knicks to win. But I feel like it's going to be a close one because a blowout is just like, all right, what are we doing? We're hoping that, you know, they'll make some adjustments. But if not, it's looking scary and it's looking like this might be the Pacers win. Now, this next game, just because this is how it goes, Knicks might win it. But in the long run, I'm feeling like the Pacers are going to put up a fight that's going to put them in the better position to win the series. So my prediction early on, I know it's a bold prediction, but from what it's looking like, they might have it. So you're going with Indiana. Let's just let's going just go on record. Who are you going with? I'm going Scott? with the Pacers. That's you're going with the Pacers? For now. I'm going with the Pacers. <laughs> That's why you have yellow on today, I, I right. could imagine. <laughs> I could imagine. <laughs> well, earlier I was caught up um, doing some other things before we start the show, but the exact score was 121-89. to uh, The Indiana Pacers defeated the New York Knicks, and the Pacers shot absolutely great. They shot over 56% from the field, 45% from three-point range, and it looked like they couldn't miss it one time. So we'll see what happens in the long run, uh, starting with Tuesday night. Now for the next game that we had. Wow. Um, the Minnesota Timberwolves fell. Who'd they fall to? The Denver Nuggets, the champions. The score, 115 to 107. This game was tightly contested. Denver kept a 10-point lead throughout the majority of the game, but Minnesota fought back. This is also a 2-2 series tie. Both teams won on the road, two games on the road. So we'll start with Mace where do you think this series is going, and who do you predict to win? Because earlier you said you had Minnesota winning this series. Yeah, but Cam, I got on yellow. The teams <laughs> with yellow did the thing today. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Title down, look like you might be staying home. I don't know. We was ready to move, you know what I'm saying? We was ready to move, but we don't, as the basketball guards, we don't decide that, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes people go with what the basketball guards say and they and they decide that, you know? Um, Ant-Man still looked like Jordan out there. He had 44, but wh where I really got nervous was when Murray hit that, got that steal and hit that shot from half court for halftime. I was like, you, they don't have enough history to beat them if they're playing like that. That's what I'm thinking right now. You know, like you said, Killer, we're analysts and as games change, we have to change. You know what I'm saying? I, I, want, I want Minnesota to win, but... Denver got me nervous. Joker look like he'd take on all them niggas. Pause. You know what I'm saying? That's the joke I know. So I'm I'm just saying it was it was crazy. That was a great game though. That was a really good game. But I, I at this point I'm kind of I'm kind of divided on this because I really want Minnesota to win. But Denver looks like the old Denver man. They look like Title Town. And I don't know. I, I just don't know at this point. This is the first time I'm conflicted. What do you think, Stat? I don't know. I feel like, of course, Anthony Edwards looks unstoppable. And they said we're going to let Ant-Man cook. But that doesn't mean that we can't prevent the other players, players from doing what they need to do. I mean, Cat scored 13. Rudy Gobert had 11. And Conley had 15, which to me, they could have definitely put up more numbers. And I from that, that's showing me that Denver made adjustments to not let the Timberwolves walk all over them this game. They said, look, we are the champs. This is what we came here to do. That was cute and all, all that hype, which I think collectively a lot of us, you know, are rooting for the Timberwolves. It would be nice to see Ant-Man get his glory, you know, see them get that factor. But at this point in time, it was kind of like a reminder, like, let us remind you who we are. That's what they're doing. It's still a close game, and I still think it's going to go pretty close, you know, as the games progress. But I do think that throughout this series, Denver is going to have it. I'm not saying that that's what I want, even though Mace may disagree with the yellow. 
think it would be dope to have the Timberwolves have it, but at this point, I just think that Denver's just good. Denver's just yeah, good. Yeah, since when, honestly, since when Aaron Gordon gets 27? Now, if Aaron Gordon is getting 27, you're not going to beat Denver. There's no way around it. And and how many holidays are there in the league right now, for real? Because I, I saw one three. kid get in. Three. Yeah, these are a lot. Their mother got to be really happy on Mother's Day. Yesterday got to be a really good Mother's Day. All your sons make it to the league. I mean, that 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 that's a story in itself. But we going to – Mama Holiday, if you're watching this, we need you on it is what it is. What is it like having three sons in the league? But back – At the to same Denver, time as well. Yeah, that, that got to be a good Mother's Day. I, I just don't think, like – like each of these teams are tough when you can get up two zip and you let a nigga come back and get two games back to back. Where's the urgency in this? If we get you down two zip, you're out of here, nigga. The, the, the further it's going is five games. So it's crazy that they allowed each of these teams, the Knicks, and Minnesota allowed themselves to be up 2-0, come back home, and lose two games straight. This, this is this is unheard of. This got me freaking out. Pause. As a person that know basketball, this is this is crazy. If you get up two zip, you're supposed to at least be at three one when it's all said and done. And they supposed to really have to have a miracle to get it to three one because all the momentum is going your way, but this is what happens when you got um, new players and new and new victories. These people are not used to winning because you wouldn't let LeBron them get up 2-0. No, you'd be out of here. If Steph them get up 2-0, you'd be out of here. So to all you young players, man, you got to get some mentors so y'all can start putting teams away. That's what they used to call it, right, Killer? Put the team away. Mm-hmm. Is that the right term? Yes. Get these niggas out of here, man. You don't let a nigga get down by 50 and come back and win the game. That's the vibe that the Knicks and Minnesota is giving. I'm 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 disturbed, I'm disappointed. All them words that start start <laughs> like that. I'm that's how I'm feeling about this. What you think, Stat? I mean, I can't, I can't be mad at that. I mean, you're right. And at this point, it is what it is. So yeah, I'm here nigga, it's, the, it's the playoffs. This is for everything. If you ain't going to get serious about this, when you going to get serious? Facts. Well, yes. Uh, just so you know, but Denver, they shot 57% from the field, uh, almost 45% from three-point land. So they were also shooting tremendous – I agree with you, Mace. It was a point at halftime, well, close to halftime. Denver scored eight points in 15 seconds. And yeah. that could have been the eight-point differential that they lost by. And they were lackadaisical uh, thinking that the half's over and the half's not over. I'm talking about Minnesota until the, the buzzer goes off. Yeah. And Jamal Murray hits the half-court shot after you get a, a fast break by Michael Porter Jr. And they just finished the half lackadaisical. Eight points in less than 20 seconds, and then you lose by eight points. So that's something that they may need to take into context as well. Yeah. And as far as what you were saying earlier, Mace, and I know that uh, I'm, you know, I'm moderating today, and I know when I'm an analyst and we debate on things, uh, a lot of people will say, Mace, you said this, or Cam, you said that. And I explain to people, it's like a boxing match. You could be winning in the round two, three, and four, but if – the fighter comes back in around 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, then I'm not thinking what I was thinking what I seen the first three rounds. Yeah. Because... <laughs> it, it, that's just like when Kendrick dropped the song. We wasn't against Kendrick. Right. We're saying as we're looking at it mm-hmm. at, from this vantage point right now, because you don't know when we tape. That's for one. Right. You don't know what songs we heard. But from the song we heard, mm-hmm. he was up. When he dropped the other song, he's down. His 
is Ali down for the count. He's still Muhammad Ali, but right now, the nigga's on the floor looking for his mouthpiece. We, we can't say he's winning while his mouthpiece is out. Pause. We got to go with what we're seeing mm-hmm. in real time. So we, we reserve the right to change in the pivot. Shout out to the pivot. <laughs> 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 so bo- so before we move on, I'll ask you guys' opinion. Who do you think is going to win this series? The Minnesota Timberwolves or the Denver Nuggets? Anytime Murray is making that stupid face that he made at half court, they're not going to lose, killer. You, you, He had that face like, nigga, you're cool. You know how you feel when a nigga be in his heyday and you like, nigga, we all had that time. You, you only get to be the new hot nigga falls <laughs> Right. After that, you got to be a nigga like me. That's what Murray was saying to have court. I'm going with Denver. I can't go against Title Town. I can't go against Title Town. And what do you think, Stat? I think I'm rolling with Title Town. I think Denver is going to get it. <laughs> they are, they're mad at this point, especially with the heat pack, got the fine. They say, you know what? The two games was cute, but it's our time now. Yeah, we figured y'all out. (laughs) Well, just so you know, you guys are going to catch a lot of heat because (laughs) you guys were going with Minnesota. Not from me, from the fans. They're going to remind you that you went with Minnesota. But but, but things change all the time, killer. That's what niggas got to realize. Things change all the time. I'm not disagreeing with you. What May May says, two things can be true at the same time. We can like. Timberwolves, cause I it would be fire. I want them. Yeah, to we win. want Timberwolves. <laughs> it's like Snoop. Is when you think Snoop, but he could be death row. He could be no limit. It's still Snoop. Um, and and like I said, I'm the moderator today. So, and and it's sad that it's rubbing off. I'm gonna step out of the moderator chair for a second. It's sad that it's rubbing off on that because. It isn't who you want to win, which is fine. May say he's choosing them to win because of Ant Man. That was the exact phrase. But that's not my job today. I'm going to stay focused. (laughs) Yeah. Well, we know, Mary, what we have to realize is that Styles on a Baltimore Ravens jersey today. She's supposed to be a Pittsburgh. No, we don't. We'll move on from there. We'll move on. I'm just saying what I see. You don't have to explain anything to anybody. So I don't have any, I, I have no, I have no surprise on who she picks whatsoever. So I was just saying, if you want to explain again to the audience, but I'll give you the platform um, to say what you need to I say for me more. I would like to say no, because I went somewhere and people were asking me about this shirt all day. I am not a Ravens fan. I will not be a Ravens fan. I had to borrow a shirt. I am out of town, y'all. It's still, it's still Steelers. Do not get it twisted. Now you bought them on stat. Preface that. No, no. See, you know, you know, you know my problem. That. You know my problem with this scenario is, Mace, is that she says she had to borrow a shirt. Stat gets paid a lot of money to go to the yeah. mall and get whatever she wants to get. Yeah, so the, the borrow a shirt is. sounds kind of. No, that's do- like that's, that thing. sounds like the dog ate my homework a little bit. No. Yeah, there was an alligator in the elevator. Yeah, exactly, man. No, I just didn't have sleeve. Like, I didn't pack sleeves. So I was like, let me, you know. Yes. Stat, what were you doing that you needed a new shirt, Stat? No, I needed sleeves. I needed sleeves. My shirts are like tank tops. Y'all know I don't do tank tops. I do blazers only. Don't got the blazers. What does this have to do with going to buy your own clothes? I, don't know. I just wanted to preface that I was like, dang, let me just let me just put on this shirt real quick. Okay. Yes, yeah, stat, but why Baltimore? If you're still a fan, that's what my because my how best did you friend's from Baltimore. That's that the shirt that she's like, yeah, she's this one. I was like, ooh. I'm gonna be honest with you, Stat. You make way too much money, and I know you just leaving college to borrow clothes at this point. Yeah, you know, that's crazy. Clothes. Clothes. It's kind of wild. It's kind of it's kind of wild. If it's for this, for the show, why would you do it? This is the wrong thing to do it for. If you're a Pittsburgh <laughs> Steelers fan, this is absolutely here. wrong. Thing to show now that we're here, I'm too deep. But like, I just yes, y'all, just for uh, now. Well, to add on to what that's... you say, in too deep is pause. Um, oh, so I'll just let it. you know that now that you're sitting in that chair. Oh yeah, that's, <laughs> that's wild stuff. But. 
This is what happened when you lie, you steal. And <laughs> when you steal, you rob. <laughs> and when you rob, you kill. <laughs> and when you kill, you go to jail. And when you go to jail, you suck dick paws. <laughs> <laughs> this is just that's, the kind of, that's the kind of logic our coach used to give us right yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta do it. <laughs> okay, man. So we'll move on to the next topic. Um, the Phoenix Suns, they ended up hiring new coach Mike Budenholzer, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. May Stat, do you think this new coach will be the the part of me solve the problems that's going on in Phoenix right now? First, who is this nigga, man? <laughs> yo, Phoenix, you <laughs> hire anybody right now, yo. You could hire me right now if y'all was gonna do that. Stat, stat, you could be my assistant. Killer, you could be the lead assistant. All right, cool. We could do a better job than Mike. Okay. Come. I don't even have to see his resume. Don't tell me his resume. Okay. I know we could do the same job he's about to do. So even if they win a title, somebody said, oh, May said this, and he ended up winning the title. Well, then we could have wanted to. I'm just saying right now, if y'all going in the raffle and just picking niggas the coach and you want to mix it up, pause, call us. PT okay. could be the ball boy, pause. <laughs> That's crazy, P. I'm not even going to tell P what you said. That's wild, pause. That's over pausable. <laughs> he said you could be the ball boy. That's crazy. Why, why, why would he do that to you? Pause. <laughs> he, he said pause, but you got to overrule that at this point. <laughs> That's why he said I, I'm the lead assistant. If I'm the lead assistant, PT could be the training coach at least. Do yeah, a sham doing. <laughs> Come on, Mace just did the best job. Pause, oh, Larry. Larry, he preached, Larry turned you into the ball boy. Pause. Sink <laughs> <laughs> get the job as the mascot, man. Sin is the mascot. Sin, Sin ain't doing nothing Nick, that ain't Nick related, man. <laughs> so Stat, what do you think about the hire for the Phoenix yeah, Suns? To be, to be fair, like for the position, I don't think he's a bad pick at all. Um, I know he was coaching the Bucks for like five years and he led them to their second championship. So he do got a ring under his belt. Um, I still don't know how- Oh, that's the one that won the championship? Yeah, I still don't know how I feel about them firing just Frank Vogel just to begin with, just because I felt like they needed to work on their chemistry and everything. Um, I just don't like the switching in and out. I think you are supposed to build on what you have. Um, but as far as like, if we need a replacement right now, is this the one? I don't think this is a bad decision for them. But like, they cannot keep switching coaches. I think this is like their third switch within the past three years. Three years. Yeah, they just have way too many changes, which is just not, it's not the time. Yeah, to Killer, you, you read that outside. wrong. I thought you was talking about the nigga who played for, um, for Arizona. That's why I said that. <laughs> I didn't know that was the coach that won the, won the How did I read it wrong, man? I read, I, I said Mike Boldenhouse. What did I read it wrong now? What, what did you think I said? No, when I'm looking at his name, it reminded me of the guy who played for Arizona. They had like a similar kind of last name. I thought this was the the guy who played for the Arizona Wildcats. So 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 really quick before cuz I'm still moderating. Really quick. <laughs> How if I read it wrong? You you said <laughs> no, you, you, didn't, you I read it wrong. Oh, I read okay. it wrong. No problem. I about they might be, I about to say I last name and it, it looked similar to the guy that played at Arizona. I, that was say, I, I thought I was doing a great job so far, man. And yeah, you, you, you are. Yeah, May I say you are. You are. Oh, thank you, man. I really appreciate <laughs> yeah. it. I thought I was doing a phenomenal job. Then you try to discredit me. Yeah, that's <laughs> why I took that's why I took ownership of it. So I, 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 it's thank you, man. You. You're doing a great job. I appreciate it, man. Thank you very much. Um this is definitely, I don't know in the last three years, but this is definitely two coaches in two years that's been fired. I don't think that this coach could fix the situation without making some trades. And I'm not saying he's there to make trades. That's for the GM office to do and the ownership to be a part of it. But 
obviously this big three, or if you want to call them a big three pause, is not working. Um, and I'm not sure what they're going to do in the offseason, but some things need to change because looking at Minnesota, looking at uh, the Timberwolves, uh, looking at Dallas, looking at OKC, I don't think this team presently formed with this roster can be any of these guys. Now, when you got Kevin Durant and you got Devin Booker, uh, anything's possible, but they're also slacking on defense. So you have to get a coach in there that's going to get them defensive-minded as well. So we're moving. Yeah, they, I'm sorry, Murdo. I didn't mean to interrupt. You yeah, something? this coach, um, now that I looked at it, this coach is the one that could get them to buy in. That Before they could even build, they got to first get somebody that's reputable to the point that he can look Kevin Durant in the face and Kevin Durant is going to buy in, um, as well as book. You know, I don't really count Bradley Bill at this point, but them two know they belong on that team. Um, even though this this summer, book may go somewhere else. But I'm saying if there was a coach, he's coming in as a champ. He could tell them about winning. Book want to hear about that. I know Book want to win. Even though Kevin Durant has already won, it would be nice to see him win in his own situation. So it, I, I hope he has the right communication to Kevin Durant and Book because it will really help them to stay together at this point. Because the money going to be flying this summer. The money will be flying for Book this summer. Um, and with the Knicks looking like they looking, New York might be a good place for them to, to, to consider. But I wouldn't want them there at this point. But to go with the coach, this coach is definitely one who can get them to buy in. I think he could. And he'll bring out a better bow ball. So you don't have to make, you know, the the um the highlights with just saying, I get it. He can get a new clip. Nice. What do you think, Stat, wrapping up before we move on? And this is like not even at any player. I still feel like there's just a couple things that are still works in progresses. I don't even really know. There's still a lot that I need Bull Bull to prove before I can say any coach can make adjustment just because I'm not seeing what I need to see from him. Um, but just in general, wow. we're running out of time. We just, I'm ready to see some things happen. What do you, pause, Thank what you. do you need Thanks, to see right? from him? Bo Bo? Yeah. Some some sort of like you want to be there. I'm not getting that. I'm not getting that from him. It's just another stop, a hot spot for him, you he's think? Just, he's just there. Like and Are you saying my, my are you saying that Bo he's Bo? a are you saying that he's a young journeyman? A young journeyman. <laughs> Bo, played, you got a star that. ball and niggas is trying to disrespect you. I didn't say that, uh, but that could be the correct definition. My thing is, is like for to be a bull bull, to be like the hype that he had and the height that he has and to see a Wemby rather than your reaction being, I get it. Why isn't it like, psh, I could be better than him. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not seeing that. I call it that za. Like, I'm not seeing that za from him. I'm just getting the, all right, cool bet. Like, you shouldn't be comfortable with that. You should be trying to be better than that. Well, I'll, I'll wrap things up in, the, in, Bo, Bo, in Bo Bo's defense is that when the NBA wants to market you the way they marketed Wimby, then that's cool. They didn't market Bo Bo like that. He's some black African nigga in their eyes. Two father was okay. <laughs> <laughs> and they like, you, you may be better than your father. Wimby... He's getting all this stuff before he even gets to the NBA to where they smacking the fucking old school pop bitches. Britney Spears and all that. So I, to me, I'm not saying that I yeah, get your- Yeah, we couldn't have smacked yeah, smack Stat, Britney I get Spears. your, right. I get Stat's perception, but we can't fault him for the way the NBA markets certain players. That's why he has that comment. That's why he says, I get it. He's the nigga that y'all suck, y'all, y'all sucking dick. I, I get it. He's the new one. Like I wasn't that nigga because y'all didn't give me the marketing. This Bo Bo has never had the marketing that Wimby's had from the time before he gets to the NBA to now. 
But I understand your vision stat to where you're like, it doesn't look like you want it. And to be honest with you, he may be mentally tapped out. Like, I be busting niggas ass. I don't get no, I don't get no run. I get traded from team to team. And they acting like Wimby's this nigga. So mentally, he might be tapped out. I'm not saying he's ready to leave the NBA or anything like that. But when you got somebody being marketed, such as Stephon Marbury in my high school days, and all the cameras yeah. are there, and all the flash and every newspaper, and you got people like me and Mace like, y'all only gonna come to a few games of ours when we got the big games, but Steph has marketing 24 hours a day. And that's where I was coming from. Thanks. Which and I that's get that, why you I gotta be a killer. That's why you got to be a killer. You, even though there was a Jordan, there was also a Spreewell. He got to be a Spreewell. Like, yeah, I know y'all niggas saying he's him, but even him does not want to see me right now. He got to be that. He got to take that approach. I know this is the guy y'all going with, but every time I play against him, I'm going to torch him. Pause. Okay. Moving on, Nike has given Asia Wilson her own signature shoe. And this was like just a couple weeks ago. Why doesn't Asia Wilson have a shoe? So I seen Dawn Staley talk about it. I seen a lot of tweets, people talking about it. The question I want to ask to both of you, and I'm not saying I feel like this, I'll give my opinion afterwards. Do you think this is a pity shoe saying that we gave Caitlin Clark a shoe, and it's a lot of pressure on us. We're going to give Asia Wilson a shoe because we know her basketball skills deserve a shoe. But do you think it was pressure on Nike saying, Asia Wilson put in all this work, and you didn't give her a shoe, but you're giving Caitlin Clark a shoe? Do you think this was something Nike had planned, or do you think this is more like, I'm just going to do this so we can get the pressure off of us? What do you guys think? We'll start with Mace. Well, we know Jordan didn't give her a shoe. I'll start with that. Jordan didn't give her a shoe. If it was really that serious, Jordan would have stepped in and said, you know what? I think you're like that. So I'm going to put the Jordan stamp on you. And Jordan didn't do that. So when it comes back to Nike, I personally, my own personal opinion, Nothing against Asia, nothing against the Aces, because I do want to go to those games. But it comes across as a pity shoe. It wasn't in the makings before, and they didn't come out and say, you know what, we missed it. I would have needed them to say we missed it before they gave her the shoe, because without clearing things up, it's like getting cheated on, and then we just see you back with the person you got cheated on. You look, I wouldn't have done it. What's that? I don't care if it's considered a pity or not, because at the end of the day, Nike saw that there was a demand there. I've been rooting for Asia to get no Nike. Those ain't no, demand. no, I have because I was saying. Remember, we had this whole debate previously because I was saying she fully deserves to have a shoe. A she has all the accolades. That for She's a great a shoe? player, two-time WNBA champion, WNBA finals MVP. Like she deserves it. This is the outcome of people complaining about somebody else getting it and her not having the opportunity. Now that she has the opportunity, I don't care because she's gonna get that bag that she deserves. Okay, so let me day, let me be clear. I'm not her, saying stat, let me be clear. I'm not saying she doesn't deserve a shoe. You use the word demand. I'm I'm saying there was not a demand. She does deserve a shoe. But there wasn't a demand like me. was like, oh, we got to have the Asia Wilson shoe. I'm I'm just clearing that up. But does no, but she that... deserve a shoe? Yes, all day long. But this is also still where we d disagree because I think there is a demand. I don't think that they realize that there was a demand in, until the Where's uproar that Where's the demand? Happened. That's why she has a shoe now. I think it took people complaining no. and making uproar for her to Stat. have it, which is, shows us you, people are going to buy her shoe. Stat, you ever seen the Russell Westbrooks? Okay. <laughs> he, 
He has a shoe. Listen, it's like, you know if you really got the right shoe when they design your shoe well. Killer know what I'm talking about. That's, that's why he wanted to be the host of <laughs> that got a shoe. There's niggas that got a shoe that you know they didn't put no time into developing this shoe. They just say, yo, we're going to get this nigga a shoe. It's like that shoe is horrible. And I love Westbrook. I'm not saying his shoe is horrible. I'm saying they don't put much thought into some people's shoes. And then other people's shoes be fire. Like when they put the the the, the snake skin or whatever that was, pause, on the Kobe sneakers, that was genius. The mon- You know what I'm saying? Like they could give you a shoe. But they gotta give you the right shoe so it could, so you can become iconic with the shoe. You get what I'm saying or no? So it's nothing against Asia. It's nothing against Russell. Is you need the right shoe? That? I understand what you're saying. I just still disagree. <laughs> like, so you, so saying. you, so I'm I'm just asking a question. So it doesn't matter what shoe they give you. It's not that it doesn't matter what shoe they give you. I think it's still going to be a good shoe that's developed. But what I'm saying is, like, prior to Caitlin Clark, there is still this whole WNBA community. And Asia Wilson is at the top of that community. So her having a shoe was a demand that was already there. The first just what came to everybody's, you know, attention was Caitlin Clark because, okay, NCAA, like, she's brought, you know, more eyes to it. But... At the end of the day, that demand was still there for Asia. So should I have a shoe? If you finna go to the games and we finna be watching WNBA, <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Yo, I love the new generation, killer. Yeah. Yo, they they fight for everything. Well, Niggas be dead what? wrong fighting hard, too, yo. It, yeah. There was no demand yeah. for the shoe. Kids and... In high school, wasn't like, yo, I need an Aja Wilson sneaker. That's a demand stat. What is your definition of demand? Something that people want. <laughs> I think this is a. I think this is a big. This could be a really good discussion. Like, I think that yeah. that is something that people. They gonna say, man. I'm not hating on Asia. Shout out to Asia. I just want them to give her the right shoe. If they give her a right shoe, something that looked like a, you know, one of them sneakers that be around for a long time, it makes the basketball player more iconic. So if it's fire, will you buy it? I will. Okay. Holding you I it. won't play against Larry one on one in them, but <laughs> I'll buy the shoe. Larry can't hear you. <laughs> I gotta get y'all earphones. <laughs> Well, look, I'll step in and I'll say this. I actually have four pair of shoes, the Flea Box with Reebok. They all sold out in 10 minutes when I had them. I actually had a demand. When I, That's the demand. <laughs> when, I was, when I had sneakers. <laughs> each pair of sneakers that I had, they sold out in less than 10 minutes each time. That's, that's where the demand is. And no disrespect to Asia Wilson. And, and no disrespect, I'm just a moderator today. And I don't want to always agree with Mace when I'm not a moderator, but... If there was a demand, just so we're getting Mace's point stat, is that it wouldn't have took the Caitlin Clark deal for Asia Wilson to get a sneaker. It would have been a demand. And I'm not saying that it wasn't a demand before, but we didn't know about it because it wasn't such an uproar about the sneakers until Caitlin Clark got her sneakers. Then, the, to me, the demand came. Like, what's going on? Why doesn't she have sneakers? What the hell's going on? So I understand where you're coming from, stat. But I never heard nobody crying about, yo, why Asia Clark? Why? I mean, pardon me, Asia Wilson ain't got no sneakers. What the fuck going on? After Kate and Clark got her sneakers, then this demand <laughs> that you're talking about came into effect, which I don't believe was a demand either. I think niggas was like, you bugging this bitch, no disrespect, this young lady, best basketball player <laughs> in the WNBA, deserves the sneakers. NBA Finals. <laughs> MVP, Defensive uh, Player of the Year, stats on top of stats. She's super duper nice. Why the hell doesn't she have a sneaker? And the black community yeah. got behind it. 
Now, Stat, you may know something we don't. I'm just telling you from my eyes, and I think this is where Mace is coming from as well, that we didn't hear about a demand. We heard about Caitlin Clark getting sneakers and people in an uproar saying that, why doesn't Asia Wilson have a sneaker? And like May said, damn right, she deserves a sneaker. She's the top of the food chain in the WNBA. So yeah, yeah, she definitely she, deserves it's one. It's a difference for me. And like I said, yeah, I'm not trying here to change your opinion, just step in and give it mine, between a demand and people saying you're the best player. Because you could have been uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, which was the best player one time, and I know what I'm talking about 40 years ago. I don't want to yeah. pair, pair Kareem's. <laughs> I don't yeah. I don't want to pair those. So no disrespect, but I understand where Mace is coming from. And I was just giving my opinion. Stat, do you have to say anything else before we get ready to go to break? Um, no, because I still understand both both sides, oh. but that's still the same. No, I get it. But I, I, get, I get both points. Yeah. Right. Cool. Yeah, we love Asia up at, at this show. We just we're just making a difference between demand and deserve. Right. So we we'll go to, so we're going to go to break, and when we come back, we're going to hear some words with Jason Tatum said. Be right back. She called us thinking about us toxic. Four years and counting. Got you feeling like an option. Maybe I'm my own problem, babe She tired of hearing I don't know My stubborn in me won't fall, oh, oh Dealing with this thing called trust But she really thinking about She wanna be free Why am I in this one? She wanna be free Away. I, I wish somebody told me the rules. Disagreements let her win, then it's cool. Even when I'm right, this ain't about you. Welcome back to It Is What It Is. And right now, let's get into our underdog fantasy picks. Tonight, the Celtics play the Cavs. Underdog fantasy has Jason Tatum at 44.5 points, rebounds, and assists. Mace, higher or lower? Lower. Stat, what do you think? The number sounds real high, but last game he had 13 rebounds. Do I think he's going to get that again? No. no. So I'm going to go lower. <laughs> no. Okay. We're going to go lower on lower. that one. Yep. Underdog Fantasy has Jalen Brown at nine and a half rebounds and assists. Stat, what do you think? Jalen Brown. I'm going to actually put him higher. Higher. Batman. Black and yellow. Okay, okay. And last, they have Donovan Mitchell at five assists. Mace, higher or lower? <laughs> he can get more than five assists, but will he? Um, lower. I can see him getting right at five. Right. I feel like he's going to have right at five, too. For the sake of... Us having the same picks, I'm going to go higher for this one. I think he could get six. Well, then I'm going higher, too. How you like I'm that? I'm trying to get what you didn't get. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> so you go, pause lower now. <laughs> no, I chose higher before you chose higher. <laughs> what? <laughs> Yes, we got Since you just want to go opposite, go opposite. Keep that energy. <laughs> Keep no, that not same no energy. Not no more. You okay. got the same picks. <laughs> well, make sure you go down to Underdog Fantasy and place your picks. Now, Jason Tatum from the Boston Celtics says, everybody <laughs> says we're a super team, but we're not getting rewarded like one. What do you think he meant by that, Mace? Oh man, killer! Is that your moderator face? Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's my moderator. <laughs> yeah, it's my, my, my moderator. It's my... <laughs> <laughs> That's what you think they be doing. <laughs> yeah, that's how they be. 
That's what I look like. I ain't, I'm not. I don't see you, moderator. I don't really watch our show, but yes. sometimes because we do the show. But I watch TV. He's like, it's the moderator face. Yo, killer. <laughs> yeah. What does he mean? He's not. They're not getting rewarded like it. Well, real quick, I'm gonna step out the moderator seat and stat. Could you elaborate a little more about what he said and what this what this context meant exactly? Yeah, basically, it's just like all the comments people are saying, like having high expectations for the Celtics because they are a super team. And he's saying they're not getting rewarded like one. So I don't know if exactly if he was referring to like, you know, other people in the league, like fans, audience, like just not having that whole spotlight on them like they do, for example, like with the Warriors when they were winning. So he was just talking about it in comparison to that. Yeah, he also said that they didn't have coach of the year. They didn't have the um the MVP. They they only had two superstars, and they want to be rewarded like it. But what what he needs to understand is that in order to beat Jackson five, Tito and Jermaine got to get off the bus too. You can't call it Jackson five if Tito and Jermaine don't get off the bus. And what I mean by that is that yeah, you guys on paper is a super team. But poor singers is not always there. Um, Holiday doesn't always show up, and that's where the glitch is. The glitch is not on the public. The glitch is in that team. And I think that's the part that he's really not understanding. He's looking at what's on paper, but what's on paper doesn't show up all the time. Just like he's supposed to um, really be the sole leader of the team. But some days it seems like when they're really strong, pause, that um, Jalen Brown is more of the leader. So you need some consistency there. I remember this guy told me this, Killer. And what do you think about this? Mm -hmm. He said, um, he said if Michael Jackson gets fat, he doesn't make the same money. So pause. What he what he's trying to say is that even though you got this name, you gotta live up to the name. You got to always show up the same. Yeah, I dig that. I mean, it depends on who, who it is. If you're asking me that question, yeah. um, definitely Michael Jackson, 100%. But Bruce Springsteen, he, they going to see Bruce. It's, it's favoritism <laughs> for certain niggas. <laughs> certain, certain niggas don't, don't matter if they get old, get fat, poor. <laughs> certain niggas. So I agree with you for, you know, probably, you know what, that's more of a, a, a great statement for the black community we don't want to see nobody change <laughs> that, <laughs> stay out of years that's man. what i'm saying yes that's yeah. what I'm saying. yes absolutely so if, they, they don't, if they don't show up it changes everything right stat i don't know i f i feel weird about this statement because it's like i, I don't really know what he's expecting because it's like you play for the Celtics, of course, like you guys are held to a higher standard and it's like the ball is in your their court. Like this is the, a really great situation for them to get a ring. So it's like nobody's rewarding you anything until that happens because we don't have a reason to. Like there's not no, and I'm not saying that like everybody has a different story but it's not like, for example, like Timberwolves, like we got Ant-Man, got a good story, younger player, Mike, Michael Jordan comparison, stuff like that. Like we kind of want to see them win. Not saying that we don't want to see the Celtics win. I would say because of their franchise as a whole, you know, they have some super fans and they have some people who despise the Celtics. They haven't fully earned that from the people yet to just be, you know, getting that full reward yet. Um, they've had a lot of couple, not a lot, but they've had a couple changes in between as well. Um, it's obviously not the Celtics team that they had last year, which is fine because they're still performing well. But like, I don't. What do you want? A cookie? Like, I don't. I don't, I don't know what he's expecting. This is me. that he's in that TikTok mode. Pause where you know they just highlight the the greatest stat that's in their favor. Remember we was talking about that? That's that Gen Z mindset. Oh, we only lost four games at home. Nigga, you got Porzingis, you got Jalen <laughs> Brown, all the people on your team. 
Y'all should be that good. And that's mm-hmm. what's not clicking in his brain. What else, what else do you need the GM to go out and do for y'all in order for y'all to run through the East? What I was saying um, before we move on, I just my only question is, what do you mean we haven't been rewarded like one, like a super team? It's for you to go get the reward. I don't. That's the part that I'm confused about. <laughs> like, I didn't. He get want it. more calls. <laughs> that That's part. What he mean that by part. being rewarded? He wants more calls. He wants three players in the All Star game. Um, what else? He wanted somebody on his team to be up there for MVP. These are all of the things he's probably okay, thinking about. Got, okay, that, that's, that makes a little more sense because I was a little yeah, bit they, confused. They, they, didn't, um, they didn't put us up there for MVP. Right, okay. Um, we didn't have three players in the All-Star game. Yeah. And our coach wasn't even up there for coach of the year. Got you. Okay, that makes sense because I was like, we're not getting rewarded like one. And that was confusing me because I'm like, if you mean championship, but you made a lot of sense, Mace. And listen, I'm going to be totally honest with you. I was saying that they don't have anybody in anything outside the All-Star game was kind of crazy too. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not mad at the Joker getting MVP. I'm not mad at uh, Shea coming in second or Luka third or Giannis or anything else. But I thought Tatum Brown, somebody should be in the conversation. There's something to say. Something should be said when you're ahead of the whole league by 15 games. To me, that's just what I'm saying now. Now, if playoffs are something different, but in the regular season, nobody was even in their rear, rear view, and they absolutely wasn't up for any awards whatsoever. Uh, moving but, on. I'm sorry, guys. That. Well, kind of like what we were talking about earlier, though, like when there's an agenda already written, you really have to be able to prove to the people that that is your spot to take. Kind of like he was saying before, like, okay, somebody's going to take over the lead next. That's my spot to take, like, we need to see something that shows that's your spot to take if you want those rewards in return. Which, because I mean, like, I think they are deserving. I don't know exactly which ones, but I don't know. It gets tricky because there's just a lot of other people in those spaces who are the clear cut winner or like favorite. So it's hard to put them in that category because I think this is a bold statement to make, but I feel like they're losing favoritism around a lot of people, even for them, you know, being first in the East and people were still probably like, but they're probably not gonna make it to the final. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody was like, okay, yeah, they're leading, but like, they're gonna choke. Like everybody's had some sort of doubt. So once they crush that, I think that that's when that conversation can change. But until then. But but the awards that Mesa is referring to are not playoff rewards. Mm-hmm. There's different awards yeah. for the playoffs. The yeah. regular season, those the MVP, yeah. the defensive player of the year, right. uh, most rebound point, those are all regular season awards. Those aren't right. playoff awards. So right. that that has nothing what you're talking about. Yeah, he's I, still I, thinking too low. Right. He's thinking too low. Mm-hmm. Even if they win it all, he's still thinking too low. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying winning it at all is thinking low, but the way right. he's processing things is making me look at them weird. Like, bro, you don't get it. Which is what, that's kind of what I was trying to say, but yeah. Yeah, like, oh, we should have gotten the best, the most improved player of the year. Derek White should have that right now. It's like you're focusing on all of the, Paul, low hanging fruit. Okay. Go win the championship. I think I'm gonna overrule low hanging fruit before we move on, but. Let's move on. (laughs) After the Western Conference Finals game, whether it's May 20th or May 22nd, TNT has put together a rich and shameless episode on Brett Favre. Brett Favre still owes the state of Mississippi over $700,000. If you didn't know, he stole over a million dollars in welfare money. What do you guys have to say about this situation? I know it wasn't on our list tonight, but I didn't put it on the list because I wanted to get a spontaneous reaction from you. Him still owing the state of Mississippi uh, over $700,000, stealing over a million dollars from welfare, 
and he's Brett Favre with millions of dollars. And TNT is also doing a special on it. What do you have to say about that, Mace? Brent Favre stole $700,000 from welfare? He stole over a million dollars, which he still owes over $700,000 now from welfare in the state of Mississippi. Yes. How is Brett Favre even eligible to get welfare? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what what kind of connects he got that Brett Favre can go in there in social services and say, "Yo, I need a million like right now." So for what, Brett? Don't worry about it. Go down the hall, and talk to Julie. Julie gonna set you up. What was his payments like? Like you know, on welfare, you get paid on the first. You know, the third and the 15th, oh, first to the third. That's crazy. <laughs> what was, where was, <laughs> where was Brett Favre getting his check? And where, oh, where was he depositing in the oh, bank? Shit. When the people see it, they said, Brett Favre just got another welfare check. <laughs> like, <laughs> what did I <laughs> Did they oh, give it to shit. him in stamps? Oh, Imagine man. Brett Paul with a briefcase or a duffel bag of all food stamps, a ticket and food stamps, killer. Yo, how's he eligible as well? I have to get to the bottom of exactly how he got his money. I don't believe it. Yeah. Was, I don't believe he was getting welfare checks or anything like that. I think it was a a white people PPP type scam situation. Like, oh, it was like, yeah, 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 it was on one of them four fronts. Yes. But it still came out of welfare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Still came out the state. <laughs> right. But, I know all about that state now. Right. Yo, imagine but, Brett Favre walking out of welfare <laughs> with a million food stamps in a duffel, yo. <laughs> Foul, yo. Foul. Oh, shit. Oh, he said, man. take him downstairs to the vault. Pause. And he just put all of his food stamps in the duffel bag, walk out. He said, who cleared the, who cleared the shelf? <laughs> Brett Falls. <laughs> Brett ain't just coming in and getting a million out of here. <laughs> yeah. Brett, you better pay that money back. All kind of niggas. Yeah, what happened? You could tell me. I don't know if the mic on. You could tell me, though. Know. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, it's that. Oh, I thought he was talking. Um, I'm just trying to figure out, like, what are the repercussions? Like, is anything happening to him after they're just making, like, a, a film for it, basically, Cam? Yeah, well, well, TNT, they have a series called Rich and Shameless on situations like that. And uh, okay. this isn't the first um, episode that they'll be doing on situations with athletes, so on and so forth. But this is the latest one that comes out, depending on if the Western Conference Finals finish May 20th or May 22nd, but it'll be aired right after the Western Conference Final. I don't even have much. To, I would watch it. The rich get richer. I'm just trying to figure out what they did and how he did. Not how he did it. Not for my sake. I just want to. I just want to see. <laughs> Let me preface that. That's it. Because that's. I don't, I don't Man, know. there's people out there <laughs> need milk, pause, cereal, cheese, eggs, everything, and, and Brett got a million from welfare. It's crazy, bro. I don't know about that, bro, because I was a real Packers fan growing up a little bit. Well, Packers fan. Well, just to add some more context, and this has nothing to do exactly with this situation, um, the governor of Mississippi, Tate Reeves, he's actually facing criticism because he proclaims that the state of Mississippi is Confederate uh, flag month in the state of Mississippi. April is the Confederate flag month. So if I don't know if that speak volumes of what's no, that going mean on in if I want... 
That's when what niggas out that they be chewing that snuff and all like that. that's just chewing tobacco and spitting out. And if I want to give them a million dollars, pause. That's my business. That's basically what he's telling you. Yeah, and it doesn't matter where it comes from, and it, and it doesn't yeah. matter where it comes from. Pause. We gonna handle Mississippi business <laughs> where we. Yeah. <laughs> I should have told him to plug your mic in. Yeah, yeah. that's that basically uh, what he's saying, Stat. That's insane. That's just insane. Okay. And Confederate Flag Month is even more insane. Right. <laughs> Confederate Flag Month. And so, yeah, that's wow. I was just reading that and I actually seen that on television the other day. So we'll, before we go, leaving uh, this episode, there's one more thing kind of pertaining to this uh, Brett Favre situation with Glenn Baby Davis. Larry, do you have the information on that? Yeah, so 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 basically they're kind of comparing the two and they're saying that Big Baby um, defrauded Medicare. Medicare. Hold, on, hold on real quick. Let me, let, me, let me lay this out, pause for you. So those that don't know, former Celtic and former uh, NBA champion Glenn Big Baby Davis has just been sentenced to three and a half years for defrauding the NBA's uh, medical program or whatever it is, frauding them. And him with a list of other people have been sentenced already. He hasn't gone to jail yet, but he's been sentenced to three and a half years. Larry, what are the people saying about this pertaining to him and Brett Favre? So, so you know, one of the comments I read is just like, this is like um, crack cocaine, Big Baby is crack cocaine, and Brett Favre is cocaine. Right. <laughs> 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 wait, wait, say that again. <laughs> say that again. <laughs> Big baby is crack cocaine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because because he's get caught. He got caught and he's getting sentenced to going to jail. And then the white guy is getting probation or not even being he's not even getting criminal. So what charges. Co- what what kind of cocaine pause is he? Basically, what he said, what the people are saying, this is this makes basically, basically, to put it in a, in a in a good way. Basically, they said, crack is ghetto. Yeah, cocaine is high class. Yeah. So yeah, okay. That's that's what the the people so Brett, online yeah. are saying. So they're saying it's crazy how Big Baby is going to jail for allegedly defrauding a institute or organization or association. Yeah. Yep that he was a part of for trying to get medical benefits. So what the, whatever the case is, I may be wrong, where Brett Favre is actually robbing the state and not only robbing the state. No, I get that. I get that. He's big farmer. Yeah. He's big farmer and he's crack cocaine. <laughs> right, right, right. So what do you think about that, Mason? I'll get to you stat in a minute. Being that Brett Favre hasn't even been charged and Big Baby has been sentenced. Wrong complexion <laughs> for the connection and the protection. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it happened in Mississippi, so he just basically told you, we make our own rules. Right. And and it got a lot to do with um, Big Baby Davis is not connected to anybody with real power. That's what it it boils down to a lot of times when you're going through something, if you can make a call to somebody who got power, they can make something happen. You know, they could relieve the charge. Just like I was walking out the door and the guy said, one of the guys said, if you speak to him, if something happened out here, you good. It's just, you got to have the right people on your team and, and have calls you can make. And Big Baby Davis didn't have them calls. See, this is where um, acting crazy in the NBA also goes wrong. Because a lot of things players get away with while they're players, when they're out the league, they don't have the connections they should have had. They came across at least 20 other billionaires. So uh, NBA player's life after basketball should be phenomenal if he's thinking about these relationships, but if he's just, you know, just messing over the relationships, that's how you get 40 months. Cause he alone could have called if he had a connection with Danny Ains or any one of those people in that Celtic organization, 
guaranteed could have got him um, probation. Guaranteed. Stat? I mean, back to what I'm saying earlier, he really needs to go and watch the documentary that Brett Favre got going on because exactly how did how did he manage to be able to do that? Big Baby Davis, what, three years? Yeah, man. Nigga ain't got no time like... to be in jail three years. <laughs> yeah. Not after you played in the NBA. All right. Well, listen, P, do you got something? You've been here the whole time. You got something to say about this before we wrap up, P? Do you, P, you got something to say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big baby, <laughs> got to do better. Got to do better. If you, that's it. We'll close out with that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll end it on that note. Why is it PT? You surely got a grasp on the <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Old Boys, you definitely got a grasp on the obvious. Look, man, it was a great show. Thank you for joining. It is what it is. Until next time. Yo, bring, yo, bring my bitches back in here, man. Mace that. I'll see y'all next time. Bring the hoes back in, yo. <laughs> Got the dice kid. <laughs>